Hi everyone, and welcome back to Questions on the Parsha. This week's Parsha is Parsha by Yigash. And my first question for you is a big one. Is a person able to be forgiven for the consequences of their misdeed if it turns out that those consequences were the fulfillment of God's plan? This question comes to us in the Parsha in the voice of Yosef. When Yosef's brothers are finally standing there in shock after Yosef has revealed to him that he indeed is the viceroy of Egypt that has been toying with them all along. He says to them in an amazing way, not only I forgive you, but he says, don't be afraid. Don't be angry because you think you sold me here? No, God sent me before you in order to bring life. This is astounding. I understand Yosef forgiving his brothers, but how can he possibly tell them that they haven't done anything wrong? If you're interested in looking a little bit more into this question, go look in the 24th chapter of the first book of Shmuel, Samuel, at the 13th line, what David says to Shaul as they're in the middle of one of their arguments. So that's our first question. Can a person really claim forgiveness for their deeds if they knew they were wrong when they were doing them, and yet they ended up being the fulfillment of God's plan? Okay, next question. If you look at the end of the 20, oh, sorry, the 45th chapter, at the 28th line, right, you'll see that when Yaakov hears that Yosef is alive, there's a beautiful description of what happens to him. It says, V'yechi ruach Yaakov avihen. His spirit was revived. I have a very simple question for you. How is it possible that Yaakov, who his whole life was a prophet, didn't know that Yosef was still alive? How could he not have asked God? The commentators on this pasuk answer that question. They say that all the days of his mourning, the Spirit of God had fled from Yaakov because of his sadness. So my question for you is this, is that why is it not possible to receive prophecy while you're sad? Why is happiness a necessary component of the, the experience of God? Okay, last question, right? And this one touches on, I think, all of our lives. It's about fear. Yaakov is on his way down to Mitzrayim. He's gotten the good news. Yosef, his son, is still alive. Not only is he still alive, but he's in charge of Egypt. Life is good. He has all his children. There's a future. Their sustenance is assured. Nevertheless, he stops right at the border of Eretz Israel before he descends into Egypt, and he prays to God. And God appears to him in the night and says to him, Al tira, Yaakov, don't be afraid. And this statement, don't be afraid, will echo down through the later books of the prophets in the famous phrase, Al tira, Abdi Yaakov, don't be afraid, my servant Yaakov. Yaakov is afraid. And my question of you is very simple. What is he afraid of? I mean, I could ask it in a broader sense. What are we all afraid of? But let's stay focused on the text. What is he afraid of? God tells him, you'll go down to Egypt and I'll make you there a great nation. This is the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham. So a very simple question. Was Yaakov afraid for himself personally, despite the fact that he, know that he knew his life was unfolding in God's plan? Well, it doesn't seem so. Because God assures him that Yosef will place his hands over his eyes and he'll be buried back in Egypt. Or was Yaakov afraid of the future? That despite God's promise, there was an uncertainty in his mind. And my simple question is that, is how is it that Yaakov was afraid even though he lived intimately with the presence of God? So those are our three questions for this week. I look forward to seeing you next week.